This video will be spoiler free. This train you're looking at right now will not be possible if it weren't for Doga Kobo. Long time viewers would know I'm a big fan of New Game. It's one of the first anime I've watched and immediately, I was took onto the visuals. How vibrant the colors are, how detailed it is, and the eyes, that beautiful eyes. This show is extremely adorable. It portrays the horrors of game development work environment in the lens of a cute feel-good moe cute girls doing cute things show. And indeed, Dogokobo is mostly known for their feel-good moe shows. Himoto Umaru, Senko-san, Yuri Yuri, Gabriel Dropout are all the result of their hard work. Of course, they do more conventional romance stuff sometimes, like Shikimori or even Plastic Memories for instance, but for me this is what they're best at. So imagine my surprise when they announce what studio is going to animate this thing. Oshinoko is a manga created by Akaka Saka and drawn by Mengo Yokokari. You might have heard of Aka Sensei's previous work, Kaguya Sama, Love is War. But unlike Love is War, Oshinoko is not a funny lighthearted romance comedy. It's a commentary on the grim nature of the entertainment industry, how they are treated by their fans and their higher ups. It's pretty good, I would say. If you're wondering, yeah, this is the, this is the Indonesian version. Naturally, an anime adaptation is inevitable. The thing about Togakobo is they don't really have that much of an industry presence. At least compared to, say, A1 Pictures, which animated Akasensei's previous magnum opus. Despite this, it is obvious that they didn't let that stop them from making an absolute banger, being able to pull off these very detailed visuals. And the shiny eyes. If you pay attention, shiny eyes is a bit of their trademark. New game is extremely pretty. Shikimori is, well, while definitely more esoteric, I can tell for what they were doing, they pulled it off well. Of course, the whole team is a talented bunch, being able to pull all of this off in the first place, but for obvious reasons, I can only talk about a select few in detail. Starting off with Daisuke Hiramaki. He's still pretty new to his job as a series director, but pretty quickly he already honed down a distinct style. Namely, by his own words in the Oshinoko behind the scenes video, he makes the storyboards as if it were live action drama. That is to say, he keeps the actual camera settings and placement in mind when setting the scenario. How each of the subjects blur based on the camera's focus, how the camera might be placed within the scene. It gives them a true sense of depth and space. His first job as a series director starts with a uh... What that an angel flew down to me? Yes. Before making a hard-hitting show about the dark sides of working in the entertainment industry, this guy makes a show about a literal lolicon, rent free. At this point, he's still figuring stuff out. This painterly watercolor background akin to a children's book, the soft gradient covering the whole thing, the sometimes not at all unsettling framing to frame that yes, this idiot needs to be framed. Watanten has an interesting challenge. It needs to do that this person is actually running joke while also portraying the genuine feeling the character sometimes has. Yes, they sometimes try to play it genuine, and I hate to say it, it sometimes works. So you know, compliment to the chef, G good job. It's not everyone's cup of tea, obviously, but it is pretty cute and funny. If you can stomach whatever the f happens in the damn thing. Uh, oh god, this thing, it's, it's a experience. Literally, watching this show for this video made me experience all five stages of grief. Probably five other undiscovered ones as well. He got the hang of it in his next project as a director, Koizuru Asteroid. Here, while yes, it is still a movie show, it has more dramatic moments, and it actually can be serious at times. I'd say this drew a closer resemblance to New Game, both in art style and story pacing. This is where the animation storyboard like live action drama thing starts to materialize. Koizuru's layout has a lot of emphasis on the space they occupy, both the astronomy kind and the room kind. The framing in Koyas tend to be more on the medium to far side, and accentuating the actual setting therein. The headshot close-ups are only specifically reserved for key moments in its runtime. Asteroid in Love is very adorable. It's a bit of a slow starter, but it's one of the shows that stuck to me when I finished it. It's not perfect, I definitely have my own grumbles, but for being another show with a main character that's voiced by the Hifumi Takimoto voice actor, I dig it. In Daisuke's next project, selection project, you can tell he uses those effects to his advantage, making sure to contrast the bright on stage and the dark backstage. The extremely grand and somewhat realistic framing helps to capture the feelings of the characters. Compared to Oshinoko, selection project is more traditional idols, complete with CG performances I can do a 3 paragraph rant out of. So much so that it's basically the true roots of what makes Oshinoko as good as it is. But for now, let's briefly move on to the next person responsible for all of this, Kanakape Hirayama. She is a saint. 
On Oshinoko alone, she supervised approximately all 1,000 cuts in the first episode, adding corrections, making sure they are all pitch perfect. In fact, this whole operation was her idea. She was the one pitching it to the animation producer. Can you tell this woman is invested in the story of I got reincarnated as a son of my Oshi? She is a rather prevalent icon in the Dogakobo studio, being a key animator in stuff like Shikimori, My Senpai is Annoying, the later seasons of New Game. She always adds that extra level of polish to both the stuff she makes and the stuff she supervises. I think her most prevalent work prior to this is, uh... Rent a Girlfriend, well, why bother? Okay, okay, look, y'all can make fun of Rent a GF all you want, but this thing actually has a proper production value. And not to mention it did so well in its home country it won it's not one, not two, but three seasons. They did not give a damn about the westerners whining on Twitter. They know we didn't pay to watch their stuff anyways. Despite everything, I always loved how the characters in Rent a Girlfriend looks. They are very detailed, very cute, and very pretty. I is it good? Uh, no? Well, I mean, from the pure visual standpoint, Renda Girlfriend certainly looks cool. The animation, too, is surprisingly high quality. Kape did a great job making my viewing session, and likely yours, too, slightly more bearable. Her designs always had that extra level of detail. On Renda GF, especially, the hair caught my attention. That subtle gradient just sells the piece, you know. The gradient that's definitely more pronounced in her latest character design work. It looks pretty. Shame the damn thing is infuriating to watch. But maybe I'll just keep this to the Japanese, they seem to relate more to it. I mean, hey, the creator's wife is supportive. Back to Kape. So there's actually another show she was a big part of. A selection project. She was a character designer there too. And it inherits a lot of her style. Remember how I briefly mentioned that was the other idol show Daisuke Hiramaki and the rest of Tokokobo worked on? And how it is absolutely the true root of Oshinoko? Well... There's this tweet in my draft that I haven't sent, mostly because I'm worried that it might be too niche even for my already pretty niche timeline. Selection project walk so Oshinoko can run. This is what most of the Oshinoko staff worked on before, including the director and the character designer, hence why I brought both of them up. A lot of the ideas in ONK starts here and that's due to the story having somewhat similar aspects, only on a much, much smaller scale. The story for Slepro starts with this girl that's so inspired to be an idol but can't do to her heart disease. Uh, noticing the similarities? The way the hospital setting is portrayed, how it is framed and how the scene is rendered, there's a shocking resemblance to how it is in Oshinoko. And the whole general theme of this, we don't like doing this, but it is our job and we have to overcome it to get what we want, fighting against the elements to either reach one's dream or to simply getting that bread. But instead of it being the entire entertainment industry, it's just these girls in this particular setting. The smaller scope probably makes it slightly easier to nail down a vibe. The show is formatted almost akin to a reality TV show slash documentary, and I think it's a rather interesting direction. Kape's character design is shiny, literally. Again, her design always had that extra level of detail and the Dogokobo theme pulled it off perfectly. The colors are very vibrant and really encompasses the true moods of the scene. The performances. While the CG ones are its own can of worms, I think it looks more like a video game cutscene than an actual anime. Actually, quick tangent, the team that did those also does the new girls band cry music video. We'll definitely talk about that sometime in the future. But there are still a few sequences where they actually just use good old sakugas, drawn and art directed by yours truly. And shout out to Chaone Kotomi for storyboarding them. She also storyboards the dance scenes in Oshinoko. Now this is a more direct example of them using what they learned in a celebro in Oshinoko. It used that similar method of using a 3D model as a reference and drawing over them. I love how the dance scenes are in Oshinoko and that's definitely thanks to them having a head start doing a selection project. It's not as smooth as something like Bochi the Rock, but the camera movement and the choreography totally clears. Unfortunately, similar to Oshinoko, this is one of those things I can't talk much about without completely spoiling the plot. But what I can say is, while this is definitely still a regular old idol show, I've heard it's almost a carbon copy of Idly Pride, I don't know though I haven't watched it. As an idol show, this is definitely quite above the pack. I didn't expect much going into it, and the first half definitely feels kinda generic, but I'm honestly pleasantly surprised. It's good. I totally recommend it if you're into idol stuff. Definitely one of Dogokobo's hidden gem. By the time Oshinoko was around, you can tell almost everyone was immediately into the idea. This is one of the few works that you can just feel the passion oozing out of it. And indeed, if you look at the credits, you can see how many studios, and by extension people, are involved in this. 
everyone was eager to work on this. It struck many chords with many people in various backgrounds. The theme it covers basically encompasses almost every side of being in an entertainment industry. So much so that at the time of recording we're 9 episodes in and I still have no idea what the main arc is supposed to be. It has so many overlapping plot points is what I'm saying. In any case, they are determined to make the show as good as it can be, to take what they learn and truly make the most out of it. The 1 hour first episode is one such evidence of this. They aren't into the idea of splitting the first volume of the manga into 3 episodes. They wanted it all to be a single self-contained experience. And to their credit, they pull it off perfectly. That first episode is an experience. Totally. Barely felt like an hour at all. They are determined to make this experience as thorough as possible. Uh, okay, maybe a bit too thorough. Actually, for the first time I watched this, I intentionally avoided looking up any info about it. I want to experience it blind, you know. A futile effort, but an effort nonetheless. Based on my experience with dancings and common idol anime, I was practically bracing for impact for either haphazard CG or choppy animation. But no, it's absolutely magical this whole thing is. As well as it sounds, Oshinoko still inherits a lot of qualities from its predecessors. The paint textures on that scene of Aqua goes all the way back to the painterly backgrounds of Wataten, and actually the gradient here too and the style of simple shading. Hell, even the recap episode is a tribute to Asteroid in Love, the shiny eyes, the color palette, and the incredible framing. All of those are the result of building upon the studio's prior work, works that, frankly, not that many people even think about when the word Oshinoko anime adaptation is mentioned. Because seriously, what insane person would compare Oshinoko to freaking Wataten? Uh, me. I am that insane person. Please help me. When they first announced what studio is going to animate Oshinoko, there seems to be a lot of doubt as again, Dogokobo is neither a big company nor did it have a big name. People thought a manga series as big as Oshinoko would be adapted by equally established names in the anime industry, not a studio that primarily does movie romance series and has been practically on a downfall since 2017. But really, on retrospect and in my opinion, Dogokobo is the perfect studio for this. They have just the right amount of passion and surprisingly enough, just the right skill set. After looking at their prior shows and how they did all of them, I can't really imagine Oshinoko being done by anyone else. Oshinoko is what it is specifically because of what the studio is good at, making the most out of the adaptation and basically letting everything happen naturally. If anything, not judging a work based on the name in which it is attached is also a main theme of Oshinoko. I think the results speak for itself. It fully embodies the spirit of the source material and then a lot more. I'm very proud of what the studio was able to pull off. They've come such a long way from animating a... I, I, I can't say this with a straight face, I'm sorry. I guess the lesson today is having a big name doesn't really mean anything. Or at least, it's not as necessary as one might think. Just make good things, things you enjoy making. Given enough time, it'll pop off naturally. Yes, of course, Oshinoko probably has a budget. They have a partnership with a dishwasher for some reason. But they wouldn't have gotten as much of a budget if the thing itself isn't any good. Dokokobo isn't very well known. For those that did know though, only ever known them for the funny cute slice of life stuff. But that didn't really stop them from completely sweeping the floor, did they? It is clear that Dokokobo is determined to make this show, and they will not let their size be a limiting factor. The stuff they picked for Oshinoko aren't exactly industry-renowned names, and that's a deliberate choice. They only pick staff members that are strictly passionate about the source material and are a good fit for the project. And it shows, Oshinoko is proof that with a bit of passion and a stroke of luck, you can break into the hearts of many people, leveraging an already outstanding source material into the next level. And with them doing an anime original next year, I'd say the future is bright for animation studio Dogakobo. I wish them the best of luck for their future projects. And I sure do hope something like Wataten will never happen again. <laughs> <laughs>